Hey there and welcome to the Weave Lounge. Now a lot of you playing Genshin Impact right now might not have any idea what a gotcha game is. Well, I'm here to tell you exactly what it entails, how it tries to get your money because gotcha games got your money, that's the whole point, and what you should look out for and what you should not be spending your money on. Now, a gotcha game at its root is basically a loot box game. Typically, they are all free to play, and in order to get the characters, items, weapons, completely varies by game, you have to spend money, more or less. There's the free to play, and there's the pay to play. Free to play people usually have a lot less chance of getting any kind of high-end characters. It's designed to do that. If you get lucky and get like a five star or super character, super weapon, whatever the case may be, then you consider yourself really lucky. The pay to play people, however, they can spend hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars on these games. For instance, Fate Grand Order is a gotcha game. I spent $35,000 on it. Now, <laughs> that's a different story entirely. There's another video I have where I'm giving that account away, but that just goes to show you how much money you can dump into games like this. So free to play is the best way, but yeah, sooner or later, even if you're free to play, chances are you're going to end up spending a little bit of money on this. So be cautious about that. If you really enjoy the game, it's okay to spend a few dollars here and there. If, as long as you're getting your value out of it. If you're going, planning on spending, you know, $1,000 here, $1,000 there, you're overdoing it, stop, look at your life, reevaluate. <laughs> That's what I did. I had to reevaluate. It works, trust me. Now, what other aspects of gotcha games are there? Okay, there is a huge emphasis on character development. Now, you might think, okay, well, any RPG or any game just about is going to have some kind of character development, right? You want to be involved in the character. Gotcha games go above and beyond. You know, it's not like, you know, a Final Fantasy game, like Final Fantasy VII, you got Cloud and he has this huge story arc and line and all this stuff, but, you know, do you know his blood type? Do you know his age? Do you know his favorite color? Do you know his favorite music band? It's, it, it's, it gets really, really in depth with these type of games. And Genshin Impact is fair, fairly new, so it's got plenty of time to develop. But a lot of these games, they go so in-depth with their characters. And this is where waifus are born. <laughs> now, some of you might not know what a waifu is. A waifu is a fictional character, an anime girl, who is so enthralling that people kind of say, I would like to marry that character. That character fits my personality. I really, really like that character, okay? Uh, a lot of us otakus and weaves have one or more that we could, you know, kind of go with. That's off the path. But what I'm trying to say is they try to make these characters so incredibly likable to a large variety of different personalities that you actually do grow somewhat more attached to some characters more than others. And it makes you want to make that character better. It makes you want to get that character if you don't happen to have them in your lineup. It's all about motivating you to spend fate, spend money. So keep that in mind, you know, a lot of the character stuff that you see in there, it's great for character development. You'll get more depth than you've ever seen, but it's designed to get you hooked. That's the whole point of it, so keep that in mind. And that is where I come to the addicting nature of it. Okay, the addicting nature of gotcha games is fierce, okay? One, the loot boxes, the gotcha system itself, that is a gambling mechanic, okay? There's no way around it. I, I, I like these games all the time. You know, I play a whole bunch of them. I love to play them. I hate using the term gambling because it has a negative connotation to it, but that is what it is when you face reality. You're gambling on this thing. Gambling itself has a bit of an addictive nature to it, okay? I think we can all agree on that. But what makes it even worse is you're, there, you have these people who want to get every achievement in the game. The achievement whores, I guess you can call them. They want to get all the achievements, and by, by accomplishing that, a lot of times they have to get all the characters, all the items, all the quests. It, it max everything out. They have to be a completist. There's people who, you know, 
they don't necessarily care about, about the advancement, but they want to be a completist. They want all the characters, and they want to get all the characters maxed out. And that's kind of what the Constellation system is designed for. The Constellation system is not for free-to-play players. It's for people who are going to spend a lot of money on the game. And they get these little tiny bits of rewards that make their character a little bit more powerful, a little bit more powerful in the long run, so that it's motivation to keep spending money. Because, hey, I already have this character, and I just spent a thousand dollars. I got another one of this character, but at least it's not completely worthless because it'll make that character a tad bit more better. More better, more gooder. Yeah, I'm gotcha games have rotted my brain for a while now okay i i stutter a little bit <laughs> but that's part of the addicting nature now another thing you're going to notice is constant dailies now anyone who has played a good mmorpg world of warcraft right up there okay you have your dailies you log in every day you do a certain quest or whatever and then once you get those done you're done for the day now depending on the gotcha game sometimes you log in and you know 15 20 minutes you bang out what you got to do and you're done other games, it's like a half hour or an hour, or some of, you, some of them take even longer. You know, imagine World of Warcraft, if you're familiar with that, how many dailies there are to do, you literally could spend an entire day doing nothing but dailies and still never get them all done. That's how many there are in that game. So, needless to say, it's motivation to keep you coming back. And that's also what the Battle Pass does. The Battle Pass makes you come back, do dailies, not just, you know, the four quests every day, but to accomplish these little tiny missions that advance the battle pass. And you and you have to buy the battle pass. You get good rewards out of it. But it's kind of like paying to trap yourself into another cycle. Okay? Gotcha games are really good at this. And believe me, <laughs> once this battle pass is over, they'll have another one. They'll have another one. They'll have another one. They'll include more dailies. They might ramp up how many dailies you got to do. They might reduce some of the rewards. Hopefully not, because one of the things these gotcha games have to do is to be fair. Gotcha games can easily destroy themselves if they are not fair to the players. You know, that's why they have a pity system in the gotcha pools themselves, on the banners and such. Because they know that if, care, if, if you're spending your fates, if you're spending money, and you go 500 pools without getting anything, you're going to be disgusted, you're going to start hating the game, you're going to talk bad about the game, and you're going to quit. Simply put. So the pity system is there to reward people and kind of keep them in. It's like, that's a lot of money to get there if you're you know, using just money instead of all your Primo gems to get all those pulls. But hey, at least at the end of the day, you got something. And maybe it's worth it to you, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not quite worth it, but it's not enough to disgust you. See, there's a fine balance there. Some games are really good at that balance. Princess Connect, I think, is really good at that balance. Uh, Fate Grand Order is certainly not but its popularity exceeds that disgust level, so that's a different video, different story. But that's just what it does. It's designed to get you in there and give you these little bits of motivation to keep going and to not be disgusted, okay? Now, I don't, that sounds really negative, but in all reality, like if you're free to play and you're just spending or whatever, it's actually not an issue. It's the, if you're trying to pay to win, well, pay to play, pay to win, whichever you want to call it, that's where it starts to really ramp up. That's where it starts to get you. And more people often than not, like I mentioned before, are going to eventually put some money into this game, even though they claim to be free to play, period. That's the nature of it. And a lot of people are embarrassed to put money into this game to try to get characters that they want. There's a lot of people embarrassed that they don't want their friends to know. They don't want anybody to know. You ask them, they never spend a dime on that game. But I guarantee to you, I guarantee to you, that at some point they spent some money and they're just not letting you know. I'm just throwing it out there. Now, the last thing is updates and content. Updates and content are generally going to be very structured and they're going to follow a specific pattern. Like every 35 days there's this new quest area opened up or every 18 days there's gonna be a new banner or so something along those lines. Uh, for example, most of the typical JRPG gacha type games, Princess Connect, Toadu Index, uh, Konosuba, ReZero, they all have this system where it's like, okay, they have this little event, it lasts for about 14 days, 
is they're usually grindy to a degree, depends on the game, and then it's done. And you might have one or two days off to do whatever else, and then all of a sudden another event will pop up. And these events will keep popping up, keep popping up, keep popping up. Now, in Genshin Impact, it's a little too early for that. It's just launched, and there's a ton of content in this game. Ridiculous amount of content, and you have a lot of people, you know, including myself and a whole bunch of others out there that has just, you know, they got in, they went, they forced that, uh, they forced all the way through as fast as they could, did all the quests, and they smacked right into that wall where there's nothing left to do. Except log in daily, because the game will give you something to do, even though it's minimal. But that's the nature of the game. Content and updates. It, the banner will constantly rotate. Alright? You'll constantly get new characters. After they do the banner a couple of times, they're going to introduce new characters. Typically with new characters comes a new area, or a new event, or usually... You have these minor events, kind of, kind of like the co-op transmutation alchemy thing that's going on at this moment, but they'll replace it with something else. And if they introduce a brand new character along with the update, chances are it's going to be a big event. It could be another region area opening up. It could be just like this massive quest line opens up along with some other little things. You're going to see that pattern develop and you can actually start being predictive. You know, if you're free to play and you have all these fate laying around and everything, you can actually start being predictive. It's like, okay, 14 days from now, there's a good chance that this guy's going to be coming out, but if I wait another 14 days, I might get this, and I really need this over here, right? Well, that's not necessarily how it's going to work, but the pattern is there for you to evaluate. There's always curveballs thrown with these games, and a very smart gotcha game very smart gotcha game will always toss in surprises like it, all of a sudden you know you have this one event going but all of a sudden there's this like little minor event sitting over here in the corner that you don't know nothing about or just kind of skirted in you logged in one day and oh what the heck's this okay good gotcha games will do that because they want to get you and that's the basics of a gotcha game in a nutshell remember Genshin Impact has attracted a lot of players outside of the gotcha game box. It's probably one of the first ones to really break through from the gotcha game click, I guess you could say, to the mainstream. So this video is more of a warning for you guys than it is a guide so that you know what to look for and be prepared. If you're gonna spend money in this game, just use common sense, don't go overboard. Remember that new content is constantly going to roll out. They are constantly going to be throwing things in your face to try to get you to spend that money. So beware, be cautious, and probably the best thing of all is be patient. <sighs> like, subscribe, hit that notification button. If you play Genshin Impact, I wish you the best of luck. My advice is don't rush too fast like a lot of these other guys on videos and everything do. Otherwise, you hit that wall too soon. And if you hit that wall too soon, well, I guess you can just come watch some more of my videos. We'll see you in the next one.